Hi guys, my name is Barry and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the segment where I talk about the Scream franchise and the reasons why each victim were chosen in each Scream movie and today we're going to be looking at Scream 3 and like I said before, what we do is we talk about the killers and their motives behind why they're doing it and then we look into the victims and why they were chosen for each kill. Roman was the only killer in Scream 3 and the motive behind his killing was quite a dark one because he is the long lost half brother of Sidney Prescott and we find out that Maureen Prescott was previously an actress named Rena Reynolds and when she was in Hollywood for that small stint she was unfortunately gang raped by a bunch of guys on set or wherever they were and because of that she became pregnant and she gave birth to Roman. She didn't want Roman and she gave him away and then eventually she started a new life and Roman found out about her but as he found out about Maureen he also found out that Maureen was playing away from home and she was seeing other guys and the time that she went to see Hank he looked into the reason or who Hank was and found out that he had a son called Billy he spoke to Billy about it and he sees himself as the inspiration for the reason that Billy got himself Stu and went on that killing spree so that Roman then eventually thought do you know what I'm going to take advantage of of what Billy and Stu have created and I'm going to go on this killing spree myself and also get revenge on Sidney Prescott for a similar reason that Billy did. The first victim in the film is Christine Hamilton and I feel like the only reason that she was killed was to bait Cotton to go back to the house to try and save her but ultimately she was killed so the only reason that I would see that she was killed was to get to Cotton. Cotton Weary was the next one on the list and I think that he was killed for a statement to show that legacy characters because he has a legacy character at this point they're not safe at all and the rules are being changed for Scream 3. We do find out that Roman is the director in the Stab movie that they're making and Cotton is part of that as well. So he knew where Cotton lived and he knew everything about Cotton Weary. So why not go after him because he's easy to get to. And he also wanted to pull out Sidney Prescott because Sidney wasn't hiding at this point. So he wants to make a statement and kill one of the previous survivors. Sarah Darling is up next. Now she was killed because it was in the script. There's a script not only just one script there was numerous scripts for the stab movie that these actors were going to be acting in and it seemed like they were going to be killed in the order of the script however we find out later on that there was more than one script and they don't know what script that the ghost face killer was running off of so eventually they didn't know in what order they were going to be killed however when we found out that they were being killed because they were being killed in the script I thought to myself that we were going to get some sort of order going on similar to Scream 2 but that was quickly scrapped Steve Stone was next and just like the bodyguards from Scream 2 he was essentially killed because he was a bodyguard he was protecting people and he was just in the way but also I like the fact that when Ghostface killed Steve Stone it was the beginning of a, a script rewrite Ghostface was now writing the script as the movie progressed as the movie went along and that was great another great example of this was with the next victim Tom Prince Tom was actually reading out the script as it was being written and sent to him by Ghostface so he was killed essentially in real time next up we've got Angela Tyler who again was killed because she was killed in the script and that was a quite a bit of a surprise but also fun fact if you didn't know this already Angela was also supposed to be a killer in the movie not in the stab movie but in Scream 3 she was supposed to be Roman's lover and accomplice but that was scrapped during filming. Tyson Fox was up next now I would always put this down to him being just one of the victims in the script just like anyone else in the film but that's it sounds too easy but that seems to be the case but at the same time it was the finale of the film and as Ghostface was had already written his script he thought to himself I'm just going to kill everyone who's at this birthday party because they're in the way and I don't want any witnesses to the crimes that I'm committing. Jennifer Jolie is an interesting one because she was ultimately an end game kill she was part of the the people th that were left in the mansion however she expected that she maybe wasn't going to die because she was written in the stab script as being the killer in the stab movie so I think a part of her thought I'm scared here but I also think I might be okay because people are dying because they're dying in the script and I'm not 
the a victim in the script. I'm the killer in a script, but obviously it didn't matter. It was the end game for Roman, so she had to die. Or when I say she had to die, there's rumours that she might come back for Scream 7, but at this moment in time, she's dead. John Milton is last on the list, and he died simply because he was one of the rapists for Maureen Prescott. So I don't think his death... Anyone really cared about that, to be honest, because we find out and the story unfolds that Maureen Prescott was raped by a bunch of guys in Hollywood, and it turns out he was one of those guys. So he could potentially be the father of Roman, but Roman didn't care. He was just getting sweet revenge for his mother. And this is probably the one kill, at least the one kill in the entire franchise that the audience probably think, cool, kill him. Final cut! I already have. So far in the franchise, with the three movies that we spoke about already, I feel that Scream 3 is the one that has the motives and the kills that are all over the place, and that's maybe down to the rewrites that Wes Craven had to go through throughout the entire film, because I heard that they were even rewriting scripts on the day of filming as well. So I think that the motive was okay. I think the motive was pretty cool, but the, the way that the victims were chosen felt to me all over the place, and I'm sure... I'm going to get more comments on this one about that's not the reason they were killed, that's not the reason they were chosen, and I think the reason for that is because there's numerous reasons why you would suggest that each victim were chosen, and I don't think anyone's wrong with that one. So the motives and the, the reasons that were chosen in this video were just my opinion, but I think other people might have different opinions, and I don't think you're wrong. So if you've lasted to the end of this video, just know that when you leave a comment down below, and if you think I'm wrong and you're right, that's absolutely fine because everyone's got their own opinion on this one because I think the, the reasons are kind of loose, to be honest. But leave your reasons down below anyway, guys. What do you think is the best one on the list? Like I say, the best reason, not the best kill. Anyway, leave those comments down below. Let me know what you think and I'll talk to you soon. Meeting adjourned. to get you, Barbara. Ever play Skin the Cat. Ah! Ah! I want to know.